everyone, this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. I am continuing my floral design series with project number five. Now I asked for some suggestions for some of you, uh, to let me know what you would like to see and I had a couple of suggestions. The first suggestion was in my first video where I did a, a sunflower arrangement and this was Anne Lane and she says beautiful color arrangement, another great tutorial. Thank you. <laughs> she says I love these. I would like to see you making a wreath with sunflowers too. Thank you so much for sharing and take care. Well, thank you, Adeline, one more time for your lovely comment. And yes, I want to do more sunflower arrangements and I thought doing a wreath is a very good idea. Now on my community page, <laughs> I had posted that I had lost, or not lost, but my memory card was broken. I couldn't unlock it. So I had to wait and buy a new one. Uh, and in the meantime, if y'all had some suggestions, you could give me for some videos. So uh, Donna Tanner uh, responded on my community page saying, Trisha, all kinds of things happen in life, so don't despair. <laughs> I know I will be ready to watch anything you create. Actually, and absolutely no pressure. Thank you so much, Donna, for uh, your no pressure comment. She says she would like to see a shovel floral arrangement that could be hung on a door but only if it's feasible for you to make one. Take care of yourself and God bless you. Donna, once again, thank you for your lovely comment and I love the idea of a shovel floral arrangement. Now, I have been seeing some on Pinterest and I thought a lot of them looked really, really nice and uh, seen some that are using a Dollar Tree little plastic sand shovel. So anyway, so um, I took both of your suggestions, the wreath, and the shovel and I decided to create one <laughs> project out of that so I have done a garden shovel wreath arrangement using sunflowers so there we go let me show you how I put it all together all right so my first item is going to be a shovel of course you will pick whatever shovel you like I did purchase mine from Lowe's it was eight dollars this is a 43 inch digging shovel and there is what it looks like Now for my wreaths, I would have preferred a 14 or 18 inch wreath, but I happen to already have these, so I'm going to use them. These are 12 inch wreaths. I got these from the Dollar Tree, and yes, I am going to use both of them. I have these three sunflowers that were on another project, and I am reusing them. And I also have this little bush here that had some flowers on it. These are the leftovers on it, so I'm going to use them as well. So just look for something that you already have in your home and reuse. For my greenery, I have this bush. I purchased this at a local florist or floral uh, party shop and uh, it was only $15 and it was a great deal because it had a lot of leaves on it. Now I've already used uh, quite a few from here, so I'm going to use a little bit more. I see myself maybe using maybe from this longer bit, one of these vines. If not, I can use these smaller bits. But just to give you an idea what a nice large bush will do, this has done already two other projects. I'll also be using this ribbon that I thought matched really well with my sunflowers. So just pick a ribbon that you feel will go and coordinate well with your flowers. Uh, I am going to be making a bow to put on my arrangement. I'll also be using these paints. I have some white paint. This is a chalk paint. It doesn't matter what type of paint. It's just an acrylic craft paint. And then I'm going to be using some black. And then I have this metallic rust that I think would be great to give the metal part of my shovel a rusted look so we're going to try that here I have an assortment of brushes I want to see which ones will do the job best as I like it so uh, we'll see which ones I'll be using and then I also here I have some sandpaper and this is just from the Dollar Tree this uh, packet of sandpaper that I got it's got a huge amount in there so you want to check that out I may also opt for using an electric sander uh, which I don't have here in front of me but I'll let you know if I end up using that I want to use this for the pole, the wood pole, and I also want to distress the metal part of my shovel. I'll also be using my hot glue, and here I have some floral wire. I'll be using this to attach the wreath onto the shovel, but I also have this other wire. It's a little more decorative, a little rustic looking. I'm going to be using this at the end of the handle so that I can hang my uh, shovel on my door, or you could use a thin a piece of ribbon, just something that you feel is aesthetically pleasing to you so that you can hang your a finished product. I will also be using an electric drill, not pictured here, uh, but I will need that to make a new hole at the end of the uh, shovel handle because I will be cutting it. So I'll need that. So let's get to crafting. 
All right, so first things first, uh, the handle here is too long and I want to cut it, I don't know, maybe about right there. So I've got my little wreath, so just take your wreaths, if you have to cut your handle, take your wreaths and place them about where you want them on your shovel. And we're not going to tie them down yet. We're just going to put the, either it's two little wreaths or one 18 inch wreath, whatever you decide to do. But put them on there and then decide, you know, about how much taller you want your handle or longer you want your handle to be. I don't want it to be too long because this is going to hang on my front door and I don't want this long shovel hanging from up there. See up here it has a little hole. I don't want to hang it from up there on my door and then have this all hanging down all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to cut this short and I decided I'm going to do maybe 12 inches up. So I'm going to take this to my husband actually so he can use his saw and, and cut this up. Or if you want to use a hand saw and do it yourself. So just mark it where you want it, cut it, and then I'm going to get the drill and I'm going to drill a hole into my shovel. Now if you'll notice here, uh, this has a hole right here. And the front, I don't want it in the front. I'm going to want the hole going this way and out this way so that when I add that wire, it'll make a little loop this way where I can hang it. And I think that'll look uh, nicer. So let's get to that. I need to remove this little sticker as well. And we'll move along. About right there. It's good. Mm -hmm. Alright, so here's my pole and I've actually measured up 12 inches and then I had my husband cut here as you saw and a hole drilled here. Just a small hole where the wire can go through the, the hole that I had before was like about half an inch in diameter and I didn't need that, I just needed something small. So now my next step is to distress this by using some sandpaper. So I'm going to try manually doing this and then I'm also going to use it on the metal part to distress it a little bit more. It had some already distressing here from the store. I didn't mind that because like I said, I'm gonna be painting on it as well. So I want that whole distress look. So I'm gonna try it with the uh, sandpaper, with this Dollar Tree sandpaper. If this isn't doing the job that I want, then I'll use the electric sander. But for now we'll do this and see how that, what that uh, leads us to. And then I'll let you know if I'm gonna go further. Alright everyone, so after trying uh, the hand sanding, I decided that I needed to use my little electric mouse sander, so I just went ahead and I did a little bit here and there. I just wanted to get rid of most of the glossiness here, and I ended up getting some of the paint off here on the little edges, so that'll, that's fine with me. I did a little bit over here too. And then I did on the wooden part as well because it had this uh, kind of a gloss finish, so I need to sand that uh, uh, well as also. And now I'm just using some Goo Gone just to kind of clean it all up and uh, let it dry once I've done that and then see what I have because most of this gray film that you see on here is just a bunch of dust so just got to clean it up let it dry and then we'll be back with our paints all right so my next step is to paint my shovel and I'm going to paint the the handle first, I'm going to paint that black. I'm just putting some blue tape on here just so that uh, I don't get any on the metal part here because I don't want to have to be wiping it off. So it's just a little bit of uh, tape here just to kind of cover that up. And I'm just curving it here because it kind of goes in like that. So I'm going to paint this with my white acrylic paint. All right, so you're hearing the fan in the background. Forgive me for that. I am super hot, so I had to have it on. So I also wanted to mention a couple of things on my table here. I have this little puppy pad. I buy these from the Dollar Tree. It's a pack of four, so 25 cents per little pad here. It's a good deal, and uh, I can use this to protect my table. And once I use it, I just let the paint dry on it, fold it back up, and I can reuse it as many times as I need to. And I also use these uh, coffee filters also from the Dollar Tree. Uh, I've been liking that to pour my paint in because if I have anything on there that's, you know, I can just toss that away. Now, uh, I will suggest to get some little Ziploc bags so that if you do uh, have uh, some wet paint, you can just kind of fold this up a little bit, put it inside the little Ziploc bag, and that'll keep it wet. So if you pour too much. Okay, so there we go. Let's just get some on there. Put some paint in there. Now, on my wood panel here, when I was uh, sanding it, I also kind of went like around it like that to kind of give this little end, a little bit kind of a rounded 
edge here. Now, if you're able to give this a really nice rounded tip, do that. And there we go, our little hole has already been sanded as well so that I don't have any splinters there. So I'm just going to use a regular brush and just start brushing. I'll do this side and the sides here and let that dry and then I'll turn it over and uh, paint the other side as well, the back side. Well, this chalk paint seems to dry up a little bit faster than uh, just regular acrylic paint. There's just a little spot right here that I'm waiting for that to dry to just give it another little coat right now. Uh, I did just go once over it like that. I'm not doing two, three coats because um, I don't want it to be a super thick white paint down there. And I kind of like the idea of some of maybe some of the brown wood showing below. So that's going to be up to you how many coats you want to do. And yes, I did do the little tip end over here, painted that as well. And I ended up using just a little regular brush. I had all kinds out because I didn't know what I was going to do, but I decided not to use this bunch. I went ahead and I used this one to just kind of give it those little brush strokes. I wanted to have that texture to it. All right, so now I've poured a little bit of a black on here and I've got a napkin here. So I'm gonna use a little, uh, just regular little brush. It's a kind of a stiff, a bristle brush and just getting some of the black paint and removing excess. And then I'm going to start at the edge here and kind of stain the edges. And right about where the little hole is, I want also some staining. So kind of like poke it in there and then just brush it downward. Uh, you want those little areas to look really worn. So I've done that. And on the other side as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and just drag this downward like that. And then right here in the little edge where it'll meet the metal part, I want it to look like, you know, it's just really dirty there. So get some of the paint in there as well. And I'm just going to do that effect all the way around. And just put as much or as little as you want. If you feel like, oh gosh, I put way too much, then go over it with your white and just mute it down a little bit. And it gives it a really cool effect. See, there you go. And that is how I'm going to distress and weather the post. So let me go ahead and finish that and then we'll go over to the metal part. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and add this uh, rust uh, colored metallic paint on the black part of my shovel here on this metal part. Now I'm going to try something, but first let me go ahead and get this paint on here and see if I like that. So I got some on here in this uh, little, I had three filters, so I've just been switching them up. And now I've got another one, a new one on top, the one that was at the bottom, and I'm going to use it on here. Now, this paint has a lot of oil in it or something in it, so it's not well mixed, so I need to shake it up a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and apply it on here. And I wasn't sure what brush I was going to use. I've got this one and I've got this kind of round brush here as well. So we'll see what will work best. So I'm just applying this right where I had kind of the paint, the black paint had come off. Now. I saw a few videos, and I also want to do this on the silver little metallic, you know, I don't know what this is. This was keeping everything together, whether it's some sort of a screw or nail. Okay, so I want to put that on there as well. And I don't know how well this is going to look, but I'm not really liking it. So I want to try a technique that I saw in several videos. So I don't know who actually came up with this idea. But uh, it looked like it worked really well. So what they did is uh, they took some cinnamon, and I have turned off my fan so it doesn't blow it everywhere. So they took some cinnamon, they actually mixed it into the paint. Um, what I want to try is I want to try sprinkling it on there. So I don't actually want to just, just dump some on there. I'm going to put some on my napkin here. I'm going to try a little bit at a time because that's what's going to give it that little grittiness and make it look like it's, you know, actually rust. So I'm going to dab that on there. On the wet paint get it on there yeah that'll work like that if i push it in a little bit okay i'm gonna try that and if it, the other paint dries just add a little bit more and a little bit more cinnamon so it's going to be up to you if you want to try this if you want to go ahead and mix it in there and uh, do that. So 
There, I'll hold it up close so you can see what that's looking like. Doesn't look too impressive, but that's because there's a lot of loose cinnamon that I feel uh, I will end up kind of like brushing off at the end. It's sort of like if I'm applying glitter, but using cinnamon. So I'm gonna do this all the way around. And I got some on the white black part, so I'm just gonna wipe that off like that. And it's just up to you how meticulous you want to be with this. I mean, if it's a whole lot easier, probably to mix the the uh, cinnamon in there. But I would do a little bit at a time. This is why I'm liking uh, sprinkling it on there because I do a little bit at a time. And then if I decide that, you know what, I need more, then I can add more because, you know, if you add too much, it's kind of harder to remove it. So it's better to start with a little bit and then add as you feel you need it. So I'm gonna add this along this middle part where I feel like the shovel would have been really worn and then it would have gotten really rusted. And then of course on the bottom edge, I'm gonna put like in the middle, I think I'm just gonna do a little bit. I wanna give it that look, but I don't wanna overdo it. So I'll let me do that, I'll be back and we'll decide if it needs more. All right, so I came to the conclusion that my technique, well, it might be somebody else's technique, I don't know, somebody else may be doing this as well, is to actually put the paint, and while it's still really wet, just do a little spot at a time, then sprinkle the uh, cinnamon over it. I did try mixing in the cinnamon into the paint. I didn't like the effect because I'm using a metallic paint and it was still too metallic, so I'm probably gonna recommend that don't use a metallic paint, just use a brown paint or something that has a rust color to it. And then uh, just brush it on, you know, don't waste money having to buy a metallic paint. I mean, unless you would like a little bit of the, you know, the little bit of shine in the background, then, you know, go for it. Uh, but really, just get some, also some cheap cinnamon, get it from your dollar store, dollar tree, wherever you can get, you know, a dollar bottle of cinnamon. Because, you know, you don't want to waste your good cinnamon on this. Although, you know what, it smells delicious. So just a little bit at a time. And then just sprinkle it either, you know, by pouring it onto something or sprinkling it out of the bottle. It just depends on how much glitter you want falling all over the place. But it, gosh, it smells so good. All right, so I'm just adding some more little uh, paint in some spots where I had the metallic paint and it dried before I could get cinnamon on it. So that's all I'm doing is I'm touching it up, but this is what the rest of it down here looks like. I could add a whole lot more, you guys. Look, look at that. Are you getting a good look like that or better like that okay so I could add a lot more to it but I feel like this is enough I mean I might touch it up a little tiny bit more but I need this to dry really well okay so I went ahead and I referenced a couple of videos just to make sure that I was doing the right thing uh, what I did see them do is they used Mod Podge rather than the paint to mix up the uh, the cinnamon I keep, I keep wanting to say glitter so they use Mod Podge to mix up the cinnamon to create a paste and then put it on here uh, I have Mod Podge but my Mod Podge is a glossy Mod Podge and I think it would I don't know if they mentioned in the video but I think a matte finished Mod Podge would be best uh, you don't want something that's going to give it a you know I don't think you want a sheen on there so you know to give it more of a more of an authentic rust look now they do sell a uh, little rust uh, kits that you can use on metal to give to rust it down and it's like a three step uh, bottle process but um, it was like 18 20 dollars I believe somewhere like that at, at Hobby Lobby and they don't no longer have the 40% uh, off coupon so I went the cheap way <laughs> so just some paint and some cinnamon and I think dabbing the paint on and then sprinkling the cinnamon works the best all right so as you can see I have a really nice rusted finish on my shovel I love it so I let it dry really well I dabbed some paint on as I said I was going to do and then I sprinkled glitter um, not glitter sorry the cinnamon I keep wanting to say glitter but I sprinkled the cinnamon on it and then just let it dry really well and then I just cleaned off the excess with my little brush I also uh, cleaned some of it off with a napkin and then what I did is I went and I got some hairspray and I just kind of lightly sprayed it where the cinnamon was and let that dry and then I just came back with a little bit of you know some uh, cleaner hair and uh, a little napkin and then just went and just kind of wiped where maybe the the uh, hairspray kind of just kind of splattered on my on the metal part but otherwise I think it looks really really good so here's some little close-ups of how that looks the best thing about it is that I'm touching it and I don't feel any more of the cinnamon come off so you just want to make sure that it is super dry look at that and I didn't do the back of the handle back here. I didn't worry about it. Um, 
I'm only going to be showing this part. Or I didn't do the back of this shovel either. That's just where I just kind of got stained when I was moving it around as I was painting. But there you go. You don't have to worry about the back. Just do some of the front and that process works really well. I already showed you the handle. All of this is dry so now we want to decorate our shovel. I also felt to mention that I'm going to be using scissors and wire cutters, which are really important in the tools that I'm going to be using. All right, so we want to take our two wreaths right here, or if you just have one, then you're only going to worry about one. So I'm just going to take off these tags. All right, and I'm just going to double up my wreaths like that. So uh, if you're using two like I am, you're going to want to wire them together. So this is where I'm using this floral wire. So I just need a couple of pieces. I have to go all the way around maybe, maybe a couple of times. One piece here. And then another one. And I want to attach them. So I'm going to hold a nice piece here with a little end sticking up. And I'm going to take this other piece and wrap it around twice. Bring it back. And now I can twist it with this other end of wire. And then just twist them really well. And once you've got them twisted as much as you need, you can trim off any uh, ends of wire that you obviously don't need. So I'll just do that. Trim off this piece. Bend that twist a bit inward. Okay, so I'm going to fix this again the way I had it. And now I'm going to wire it over here the same way that I did right here. All right, so now I want to get some more pieces of wire. I'm grabbing another two pieces, nice and long, so I can wrap around the handle as well. And then I can place my two wreaths where I want them. I think I want them about this height here. Okay, so now I can just wrap this around and turn this over and tie it around the other end, and then put another piece of wire over here and tie it here as well. So that's what I'll be doing. Okay, so now that I have them wired down, I'm going to go ahead and use my glue gun to get some glue in there just to have it, you know, keep it from, uh, you know, flopping around. Especially if you didn't wire down too tight, like I didn't do this one too tight. And on the wire, just to make sure none of that moves. Okay, we'll let that dry. And we'll do the other uh, piece of wire that's going to go on the handle end. For my handle end, I want a loop. So I'm going to decide about how big I want it. I think that'll be good. It's going to be going through the holes that I had my husband drill for me. What about that big? But I want it to go around twice, so I'm actually going to cut this long enough. I think my wire is getting all tangled in its with itself, so there we go. I want it about so big, so I'm going to twist it around twice, and then I'll cut it right here, just like that. And I think I'm going to take one of them and just kind of twist it around the other piece. Just like that, just to make it a nice thicker uh, wire loop. A little more attractive than just two pieces of wire next to each other. So take this one. Okay, so here I'm actually going to pop it open because I need it to go through the hole of the broom. Or the handle. Not the broom. <laughs> Okay, so now that I've got these two pieces together like that, I can then push it through the hole. Make sure you get both pieces of wire to go through. There we go, just like that. I'm not going to bring it all the way, so I'm going to take these ends now and I wire them onto here. And let's see. And I think that's a little long, so I'm going to go ahead and trim off. I think I'm going to need my little pliers as well. All right, so I went ahead and grabbed some wire pliers so I can go ahead and kind of twist the wire a little bit more than my fingers have the strength to do. Also because I want those little ends tied up against the, the other, you know, the rest of the wire. Okay, so now I'm going to push that through the hole. Try to get right there where I put them together. There we go. It's nice and tight in there. And then I can just bring this and shape it however I want. There we go, and I've got a nice little loop, nice thick loop. 
All right, so I took a long vine piece from the uh, bush of the this ivy vine that I showed you, which is awesome for this type of project. So I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to wrap it on one side of my uh, my makeshift wreath, my double wreath here, and I want to cover this wire for sure. So I want to make sure that I have a leaf right here to cover that, and then I want this to go around to cover like about so much like that. I'm actually going to trim off this end piece. I'll save this in just a moment. I'll show you why. Okay, so first I'm going to wire this down. So I've got a little piece of wire. You can just hot glue, but I'm going to use a little piece of wire, put it through the uh, little bits of the grapevine here, the little twigs on it. And I'm just going to wire it, twisting it, and then I'll just trim off whatever excess there is of wire. And I'm actually going to use a little bit of hot glue as well. Put a hot glue there. Okay, now I want this to go over here, so I'm going to wire down over here and then over here as well, just like I did this piece over here. And then these these leaves that I have here, I'm going to cut one off like really nice and tight off of here, like that. And I'm going to take that, put a little bit of glue in the back, and glue it right on top of that wire. So just like that, a little bit of glue, and then just glue it right on top to cover up that bit of wire. That was here because underneath you can see the wire so we're covering that up so when we wire down over here again and over here now over here it's going to show so we want to put a, a little leaf there to cover the wire just in case we don't put a flower there down here we're going to end up putting a bow so you don't have to cover it but that's up to you all right so let me go ahead and wire down put a little leaf here and then i'll wire down over here and i'll be back all right, so now I'm going to make a bow to put on my wreath, and I decided that I want it down here. I actually added this little leaf left over that I had left over right on this other side here. Uh, I thought about putting it up here and then letting it uh, hang this way, but I don't want anything kind of hiding the little um, handle, the metal handle that you see between there. So I want to be able to show off all that work that I did with the rust effect. So I'm actually going to just add a bow down here, and I'm not going to put like very long tails, just about maybe six or eight inches. And then just pinch and then make loops, pinch, twist, and just make as many loops as you want. Make the same on each side if you have enough ribbon. If not, that's fine. We're going to make this all nice and round. So pinch and twist and loop. I don't know how much ribbon I have left on here. I don't think I'm going to use it all. I think I'm just going to do six loops. So I need three on each side. Yeah, I have enough ribbon left on there for some other projects. So I'll leave that cut that off a nice piece of a long wire you can use a shingle stem and we're going to tie all this together and leave this wire so we can then tie it onto here now I'll take the ends here and cut from the center to the ends here my scissors are not very good because these are the ones that I use for everything so anyway just cut a little dovetail um, if you want to do that on there Okay, so I'm going to wire my bow onto the wreaths before I even bother poofing it up. So just get the wire to go through some of the uh, bits here, or maybe all the way around. Yeah, let's get it all the way around. Let me get the other end. There we go. And then just twist it. Pull down the ends. Bring your bow back around to the front. And then fix it. You know, poof it up. Your little tails downward. Poof up your bow, and that's my cat once again because you know, once I'm busy, that's when he needs me. And just to make sure that the bow doesn't flop around, I'm gonna add some glue back here just so it doesn't move from the position that I've set it. And then I'll come back and poof it up and make it look a little bit nicer. But that just gives you a little idea of how the bow looks on there. All right, so now we want to put some flowers onto our wreath and make it look really pretty. So again, I have these sunflowers. They have some long stems on them, which I had used for an arrangement. So now I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice it by cutting them short. So just trim your stem to just a little one inch piece. And then I'm just going to bend it, put some glue, and then I can insert it into the vine. Got some glue in them. I'm just going to insert them into the vine here. And I'm going to have this one up here a little bit higher. That looks really pretty. 
Right, so I also have these little flowers and I've cut them off that little uh, bush that it was on and I'm actually going to trim these a little bit shorter. I can kind of rip this part off of here. Let's trim this a little bit shorter and then go ahead and put some glue in them and insert them into the uh, wreath. So let's put this back in here. A little bit of glue on them here. Insert them wherever you want. There we go, have it come out like that. I think I want one coming out like this. I insert them, I'm making sure that they're like under a leaf or something so that you don't see the little end with all that glue. So there we go, just like that. Got a couple more. I want one coming out of this flower over here. I'm going to put the last one back behind this sunflower. There we go. That's how that's looking. And because I do have some of these left over, they don't have the little flower on them, I think I'm going to go ahead and tuck little bits here and there just to add another touch of a different greenery. I have some shorter bits that I was cutting off the other ones, so I can use those to kind of fill up here. All right, everyone, I have completed project number five, and this is a garden shovel wreath with sunflowers, and I think it looks really pretty. I love it. I'm going to hang it on my front door. I don't know, maybe on my back door. It depends if it fits between the door and the uh, glass door that I have on the outside. Um, I would love, to love it in my front door, actually, so I think I'm going to do that. I think this will go well through summer, I mean, well, through spring into summer because of the sunflowers. Of course, uh, you can use any other flowers. You don't have to use the sunflowers, but isn't this a great idea to use a garden shovel and add a wreath to it and just combine a project like this? I think so, and I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up, and I hope that you too will give me a big old thumbs up. So please make sure you like my video. Leave a kind comment down below. Let me know what you think of this project, and uh, are you going to be doing something like this? Have you already done that? And if you have, and you'd like to share uh, your project, you can follow me on Facebook on Trisha's Creations. There is a link down below in the description box, and you can post your picture of your project there so that everyone else can see what you've done. If you have a recipe, you can also share that as well. All right, everyone, uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. So hit that red subscribe button and then hit that notification bell and please choose all. Do that for everyone that you've subscribed for so that you get notified of all our videos as soon as we upload them. So thank you all very much for uh, watching my video. Please share on your social medias and as always, enjoy.